In this video, we're going to look at black body radiation. And this is really the first experiment that we're going to look at where classical mechanics fails and sort of the birth of quantum mechanics begins. And so what is a black body? So a black body is defined as an ideal emitter capable of absorbing and emitting any radiation of light. And we see this in practice with hot metal. Um, it's the best realistic example of what we have close to a black body, an ideal emitter um, that we have in actuality. So when you heat up metal, right, it gets to a certain really high temperature. You see this on stovetops all the time. It starts to glow, right? It's emitting radiation in all frequencies of light, but a large portion of that is in the visible region, and that's why you see it glow that reddish orange color, um, is because it's it's emitting a lot of radiation in the visible region caused by that high temperature of the metal. Now, this was a huge scientific challenge as far as um, trying to to model this um, emission of radiation by a black body. And in the 1800s, it was uh, this problem was attacked by Lord Rayleigh, a uh, scientist in the 1800s, uh, he first started to attack this problem. Now, if you want to figure out how to uh, model the energy intensity of a black body, you want to come up with a distribution for its energy, right? So um, you're going to have some sort of energy distribution, right, as a function of temperature that's going to depend on you're going to have some energy that will depend on a density of states, a distribution of different states of the system, right? So you'll have to integrate from zero to infinity over some distribution of states. So that distribution, I'm going to use the Greek letter rho to denote that, that distribution. It's going to be a function of the wavelength of radiation and the temperature, right? And you're integrating over the wavelength. Right, so this is really the problem that you're trying to solve. You're trying to figure out what is this distribution going to look like, right? So this is gonna be your energy distribution. And you're basically trying to figure out what does this distribution look like? Now, I won't go through the derivations, the, at least not the details of the derivations of uh, Rayleigh's equation or Planck's equation, uh, because I want you to just see the equations and we want to analyze why one works and one doesn't. Right. So. Um, so first, let's look at Lord Rayleigh. So his distribution looked like this. Right. So you have a distribution that is a function of lambda and T. That's going to be equal to 8 pi KB, where KB is the Boltzmann constant, times temperature over lambda to the fourth power. Right? So this is known as the Rayleigh Jeans Law. Rayleigh Jeans Law. Right? So this distribution was derived from classical mechanics, right? This was the 1800s. He was using classical mechanics to derive this distribution to explain black body radiation. So let's see how it does. So here I have a plot um, of, on the x-axis, we have the radiation that's being emitted, right? In nanometers in its wavelength and the intensity of the distribution. And so the blue, green, and red curves that you see here are experimental data, right? From, from uh, emitting metal at, di at three different temperatures, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 Kelvin. This is huge temperature, right? They're raising up the temperature really high. And what you can see is that it's emitting uh, radiation at pretty much every um, region of the spectrum. Um, and you see a lot of that radiation peak in the UV region, right? From 500 to, you know, about 800 or so is the uh, visible UV region. So a lot of that uh, radiation is peaking in that region, right? That's why you would see the color on the hot metal. So that's what you see experimentally. So how does the Raleigh genes law do? Well, we can see here, this is where this curve that says classical theory at 5,000 Kelvin, that's the Raleigh genes law. And you can see that it just tails off to infinity as it gets close to that UV visible region. 
So why does this happen, right? You, you can actually make an argument of this based purely on the mathematics of a Raleigh Jean's law, right? You see that this denominator depends on lambda to the fourth, right? So if you look at this distribution, you plot that distribution as the wavelength starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller as it does in the UV invisible region, right? It starts, this distribution just starts to blow up, right? It, it, the intensity just tails off to infinity um, and you don't get this peak and then return back to zero like you get in the experimental data. Now, as you can see, one thing that I want to point out it, the, at the longer wavelengths, right? This, this Raleigh Jean's law does pretty good when you're really out far at, at long, long wavelengths. Um, you know, those lower energy regimes like the, you know, radio waves or microwave region, right? Um, you're getting really good performance from classical theory. But when you start to get to these smaller wavelengths, higher energy regimes of this spectrum, the classical theory really fails spectacularly, right? So this was so bad that physicists in the 1800 referred to this as the ultraviolet catastrophe. Ultraviolet catastrophe, right? Very dramatic, but looking at this failure of classical mechanics, you can see that it's pretty warranted, right? Um, classical theory really does fail here in the UV region. And so calling it a catastrophe is not hyperbole. So, um, so basically this, this classical theory fails. So Max Planck, the guy on the right here, right? He became interested in this problem in the early 1900s. And around that time, he was developing his Planck's law, which tells us that energy is quantized, right? So if you remember from general chemistry, Planck's law is that the energy of electromagnetic radiation is going to be equal to N times H nu, where N is just some integer, right? And specifically, it's an integer, you know, some value zero, one, two, dot, 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 right? Some integer, right? So what this what Planck's law tells us here is that energy for electromagnetic radiation is not continuous. It's only um, allowed in these discrete packets of H nu, right? So, um, you know, you would have zero H nu, two H nu, three H nu, on and on and on, right? But it's not a continuous distribution, right? This Raleigh Jeans law was derived assuming that energy is a continuous distribution. So it's allowing all of these high frequency um, oscillators in the metal to be, to be counted. Um, and it brings this distribution, the intensity goes up to infinity. However, when Planck derived a distribution based on this quantization of energy, he gets a different distribution. The distribution that Planck's, Planck gets looks like the following. All right, so we have eight pi HC over lambda to the fifth. And then you have the second term involved here where you have one over E raised to the HC over KB lambda T minus one, right? So this is Planck's distribution. Right, so Planck's distribution is derived in a similar way, right? He's still trying to derive a distribution to get to the total energy of the system, but his energy distribution includes this fact that energy is quantized in these discrete packets, right? So like I said, you can probably find the, the full derivation online if you're interested. I don't want to get lost in those details. Let's look at how the mathematics shakes out. This actually does um, better model the experimental data. And why is that? Well, looking at it mathematically, right, as this um, as Lambda starts to get lower and lower and lower, right? This guy is going to, this denominator is going to get a lot larger, making this smaller, right? So this E raised to the, you know, very, very small number close to zero, it's going to be very close to one, right? So you're going to end up with, you know, a very, very, very small number, 
right? Um, for the intensity using this distribution at high frequencies or, or using this distribution at high wavelengths or yeah, high frequencies um, versus this distribution, right? So, uh, so Planck's distribution gives you a much better model of the experiment because it includes this, uh, this energy quantization, Right. So kind of thinking back to that video I did reviewing electromagnetic radiation. Right. All of these failures of quantum, all, all these failures of classical mechanics boil down to one of those incorrect assumptions from classical mechanics. This one really hinges on that that energy is quantized. Right. So accounting for the fact that energy is quantized, you get a correct the Planck's distribution, which better models experiment than the Raleigh genes law.